Hey team, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. And before we get into the game, ah man, I've been recording for like 30 minutes and I've talked about so many things, I've progressed a little into the game and I forgot that I did not press the record button. As usual, silly, clumsy me. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Dark Souls universe. One of most my one of my most beloved games of all, of all times. So usually in this period or uh, around now, I get nostalgic. I want to play some Dark Souls, and I thought, oh, well, that's perfect because I've already had some Dark Souls progress into my YouTube channel. And I've already played some some YouTube, some Dark Souls. It was like eight months ago. Aside from doing the Ring City DLC, I started a Let's Play of Dark Souls. And I thought, hey, that's a perfect opportunity to get back, enjoy me some Dark Souls. And at the same time, continue a bit of this Let's Play. Although I've already talked about the fact that this is not going to be a main let's play sort of thing. One of the reasons is because all of you guys probably have already played the game and if you haven't, please do not watch me. Don't spoil the game that is great for yourself and go play it and experience it first. And then come back here after you've done so and watch of course. So that aside, they recently announced the remaster of Dark Souls 1, which is my favorite game of all times. It was a game that taught me so many things about myself and about being a gamer. It was a game that won against me in a fight. It kicked my ass and it made me quit. And I had to go back to it after some time in order to, you know, beat it. And I had the best time in that game. It was something new for me and I loved it ever since. And ever since I became a big fan of the Souls game series and I've played, aside from Demon Souls, which I will be getting into, into shortly, hopefully. Um, aside from that, I played all the Souls games, including Bloodborne, which I love, by the way. I wish I could have been ow that hurts man come on I wish I was have been I could have been able to play Dark Bloodborne instead of Dark Souls 3 but you know what sadly I do not have the luxury of owning a PlayStation 4 nor the necessary components in order to record a let's play on a PlayStation 4 so Hopefully that will come in due time and I will make certain to play Blood for, Blood for, Bloodborne and showcase it because that game is amazing. For the time being, I will be playing Dark Souls 3. And because I love Bloodborne, the build I choose to play to in this current character is going to be called the Pontiff Hunter. Pontiff because, you know, it... It's a reference to the rings, the left and pontiff's left and right eye, and also because it uses the pontiff curved sword. If I'm not making a mistake about the name of the curved sword, I am certain it's called the pontiff curved sword. But yeah, this build is amazing. It uses the rings in order to uh, make orphans more prominent on defense and gives us a playstyle reminiscent to Bloodborne. All in the same tier thing, being uh, an efficient build. So, if I have those rings equipped, I will be having a portion of my life back as I attack. So, yeah. It's kind of uh, reminiscent of the mechanic of Bloodborne, which is great. And the build, in general, uses dual wield weapons. And it's just great. 
The other choice I was thinking about is Sorcerer, but I was like, nah. The problem is most Sorcerer builds, or most fun Sorcerer builds, uses advanced weaponry, stuff that I would not find at the beginning of the game, or even stuff that I would not find when I play the game for the first time. So I had to be playing the game on New Game Plus in order to have a tangible and fun sorcerer build. Although there are some starting sorcerer builds that are great, nevertheless, the one that I the ones that I liked were all needing or in need of some advanced weaponry and staffs and abilities and stuff. Even some that require me to play the DLC. So yeah. One of the reasons I'm here is because I am thinking of getting down there. Now I think that I can drop down there by just using one of these and not lose all my life. I think so, without needing the cart ring. And there is a key that I also require that I need to probably buy from the handmaiden. So let's try. If I'm remembering correctly, I can drop down here without dying. But should I die, I will be doing it the correct way, which is uh, getting a key and buying it from the handmaiden and going down there and everything. But we'll see. Ah, there we have. Oh yes, I remember now. I do have that other ring which prevents me from taking a fatal death. Now I want to kill the lizard before he gets away and before that guy notices me and kills me and everything. So good. We got a heavy gem. Oh, she fell down here. She is not supposed to be here. So she fell, definitely. Which is good. We'll get rid of her. There we go. She's her with ranged attacks. One thing I wanted to make certain of is to use as much uh, items in my inventory as possible because most of my gameplay or most of my game throughs of this game uh, did not involve me using items. I've relied way too much on my weaponry, on my swords and everything and I just did not use items that they just slept forever in my inventory. So yeah. And I'm talking about PvE items. There are some PvP items, but those are something else. So normally you'd get through here. You get through all of these skeletons and everything. Into that place I dropped to earlier. But yeah. Enough talking about Dark Souls 3, like I said. I'm certain most of you guys have already played Dark Souls 3 and know about everything. In fact, I'm certain that you know more of, me, of the game than I do. And I'm certain I do not know a lot. Dark Souls 1 uh, is getting a remaster in early summer of this year, which is good. Like I said before, I'm going to make certain I will be playing that game. I would be doing a let's play and that remaster is going to be the perfect opportunity for me to do so. It has always been a sort of a dream of mine to do let's plays of Dark Souls on my YouTube channel and uh, before I create one I've always imagined how I do a let's play on Dark Souls 3 and everything and I've been always watching people like um, Epic Name Bro and Vati Vidya and stuff and they always brought the best and I've always wanted to do something similar. So here we are 
and here I am, I'm playing Dark Souls. Now I've been lazy enough not to do a proper Let's Play of Dark Souls 3, because it was too late, but I did nevertheless do a complete Let's Play of The Ring City, and I hopefully will continue this Let's Play uh, through and through, meaning that I will finish the game, I will do the DLC, uh, the Sister Frida DLC, I call it the Sister Frida, it's not called the Sister Frida, because that's an extremely amazing boss, and uh, I would be doing that DLC and everything, and that way I will have a perfect circle, in which I played the entire game, and fulfilled my promise. Now Dark Souls 1 though, since that's a game that I would not be missing, well, not I would not be missing, I would not miss the opportunity to do a let's play of, so yeah, having the remaster is the perfect opportunity, because despite that I do have right now the game on my hard drive, the biggest problem is that uh, Dark Souls 1 was never an optimized game, it has its issues, and in order to play the game properly I need the DS fix, and I do have the DS fix, and still the 60 FPS doesn't work properly, many mistakes, or many, many problems, so hopefully, I really hope that they will have a good, good remaster, not just a, not just a commercial remaster of the game. I hope they fix the Blighttown FPS issues, because that place is seriously amazing. The issues aside, and the problems of the frame rate and performance and all those stuff aside, the game is amazing. There is no doubt, not the game, the uh, level is amazing. There's no doubt about it. So yeah. Although the DS fix has already made the game amazing and I don't think it's going to be looking that much more better uh, than the DS fix thing, you know, for PC users. It's like just the 60 FPS and the high resolution textures are just going to be natively included rather than just stuff you need to download for the game and have it artificially implemented. So yeah. Who is there? Someone there? Oh, it's a me. Mario. Let's start show. Of course, since I've already played the game like four or five times, I'm not going to be looking through the dialogue and everything. Unless you guys request it, oh, I, I'll just be blazing through these as I already memorized most of them and I know what the NPCs are going to be talking about and everything. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I will talk to him, make certain I exhaust his dialogue. Was iron. There you go. So yeah. That's a reason, or that's a region I wanted to make certain I go to before I go to the path of sacrifice. Now, before the path of sacrifice, I've already cleared all these things last time I played uh, the game. Down there and up there, that bonfire is already lit. And in my, in most of my playthroughs, I've always killed the curse rotten tree up there. Uh, about now, before going to the road of sacrifices. But you know what? Since um, I want to do things differently, I'm not going to be taking or tackling that curse rotten thingy now. First, because I don't need weaponry related to the bosses, and second, because I just want to level up a bit before going there, so it's going to be an easy fight for me once I do it. I've already talked to Siegmeier, I've already fought that flaming demon up there in the tower, I made peace with the giant, all these things I have gotten out of the way when I did not record the past 30 minutes. So, yeah. Let's just go to the Road of Sacrifices. And the Road of Sacrifices is kind of a nice place to me. I like it. 
I like the geometry and everything. I do not like the crabs. Uh, on the other hand, these are abysmal creatures for me, and I avoid fighting them as much as I can. But other than that, that place is all right. It's a good place, and it leads to two places: the church of people who will sell you stuff for <laughs> prices uh, like you know a check to go to heaven and everything <laughs> if you remember in the uh, past and it will tell you take you also to the abyss watchers region one of my all-time favorite bosses in this game so as I talked about this in my last 30 minutes Dark Souls is all about discipline Dark Souls is all about being aware of your surroundings. Dark Souls is, a, is about taking time and seeing things and planning ahead before going into action blindly. Dark Souls is not God of War, nor Devil May Cry, nor any of these beat em up games where your character basically is undying and you have all this amazing combos and amazing weaponry making you able to take in hundreds of enemies at the same time should it be required dark souls is more rpg dark souls is more tactical and is more disciplined as you can see since i'm looking at my surroundings i've already noticed that guy and those two guys so i already know partially what's gonna happen next so I am prepared. Of course, for the first time, I did not know that this guy is going to grow wings and that if I let him continue growing his wings, he's going to be extremely more aggressive. I also did not know that there is this guy here. I got ambushed by him and killed. So yeah, this is where we find the, shri the shrinking or the shriving stone, which will allow us to undo a weapons infusion a really good and new mechanic that I am appreciating because sometimes you go with a fire katana for example but you decide eh, I don't want to be a fire katana anymore so you can easily just take the infusion back and do another one another infusion or just level up and everything as you can see there's an item down there which we will get to soon. And two enemies here with some items. The good news is my build is not going to be needing anything specific. Here we go. Got his wings. Now it is going to be more aggressive than without wings so i must take it swiftly otherwise it's a problem now you see those two enemies but you don't see this guy there's a problem but the problem is taken care of swiftly by just doing so ah here we go that shriek he let was probably a taunt in order to awaken the other enemies and make them come and ambush you. This is the way, by the way. The way. But, since I don't remember the game that accurately, I make certain to come and see other places like this in order to make sure I do not miss anything. And if you come here, you see the bridge, you see that guy waiting, you see the caster waiting, does cast poison and flame, that's an item over there, does another one, maybe two enemies. So yeah, scouting is something that you should always do in a souls game. Never rush an area because rushing is always gonna get you killed. As you will probably see, I always forget my wise words and do the contrary and I will pay for them. Boom. So the game I recently was playing is Neo, and Neo's controls, although I tried to make them as 
much as possible like Dark Souls controls are a bit different. For example, or his Miltred, for example, jumping or dodging in Neo is by using Circle on the PS4 controller. And uh, I mean X. Whereas in Dark Souls, it's Circle. So it's still a bit confusing where sometimes I ow, I do jump, or I do try to jump by trying to press X, or that works horribly. You see the Irithyll sword works greatly. Once you get someone chilled, they will take extra damage and their stamina is gonna be slowly regenerating compared to normal. So that's Mildred. That's a nod to Dark Souls 1. The man-eating hag, the butcher. And in Dark Souls 1 you find her... Ah, damn it. You see? This is what I'm talking about when I said I make mistakes. <laughs> Excuse me. You find that in um, not the Blood Gulch. That's Dark Souls 2. In the region I was just talking about right now that I for some reason forgot the name of. Oh, the Brigand Twin Daggers. Remember I said uh, this is a Pontiff Hunter build. That's the name of the build. You can look it up. And the Pontiff Hunter build uses everything to win dual wielding so without further ado well let's use them but these are twin daggers uh, maybe they may be not a good thing but I do have the dash kinda looks like a toned down dash from Bloodborne Nice attacks. Does this use? No, it doesn't. There you go. Dual wielding is great in Dark Souls 3. I think it's one of the best compared to taking stance or in Dark Souls 1. Okay, let's uh. Funny, I had to really focus on this one in order not to screw it up. But you know what? Uh, these are daggers. I'll just continue using my Irithyll sword until I get the Pontiff curved sword or the swords of the build, which I've forgotten the name of, as usual. Uh, I am talking about the two swords of the guy, um, you find them on the entrance to Duke's archives or that in the corpse and you find also the key to the Duke's archives there. It's kind of a mechanic to um, stop you from progressing further. You need to, that key in order to open the key to the Duke's archives and in order to do so you will need to progress through the game a bit further. So we need to be doing the beacon deacons of the deep first and the Abyss Watchers second, then you'll be able to get there. Which I am fine with, I am perfectly fine with. These things I will do without them telling me to do. But yeah. When you first play the game, you can go all the way there without realizing that you haven't done the Deacons of the Deep. One. And that's two. And that's the third one. There you have it. Take them swiftly. Lest thy will destroy you. This guy is still gonna hide his wings. While he's trying to grow his wings, take care of him. 
And then the caster. Caster isn't that much of a problem. If you keep moving and not staying in one position, um, his poison is not going to get to you. Or his fire, which I just got. Funny. Do you have anything for me? No, not really. And that's the first area of the road of sacrifices. Now, upon entering this area, which looks beautiful, you can see the wall of uh, Lothric over there. Yeah, more of a bridge than a wall, but yeah, Lothric is over there. You see, one of my, or my favourite character in Dark Souls 3, which is Anri. Anri doesn't really have a gender, it just depends on which gender you are. If you're a guy, she's gonna be a girl. If you're a girl, she is gonna be a guy. Even the name Anri is gender neutral, which is cool. It's a cool feature. Oh, hello. How do you do? I'm I doing great, you. Astora, unkindled like you. I know. This yep. is Horace, a friend and travelling companion. Are you too in search of the Lords of Cinder? Yes, I am. They are well along the road of sacrifices. Below us is the Crucifixion Woods. Beyond the... We can ah, the Crucifixion Woods. Oh, he's not... But like I said, I don't have time to talk to you, but sometimes I make exceptions when it's Henry. I really like Henry. He's gonna just give us the Blue Sentinels uh, sigil, just like that. Covenants work differently in Dark Souls 3. You just enter a covenant by equipping their sigil. Like, for example, I'm a warrior of the sunlight. I can be in the way of blue or the blue sentinels. Although covenants do not really matter that much in single player, they do have a meaning in multiplayer. And here we are at the Crucifixion Woods. My favorite area. <laughs> not really. It's a good one. So yeah, as we progress through the Crucifixion Woods, uh, that would be in the next episode, of course. So I will leave you guys until tomorrow. So until then, you have a great day. And I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye-bye.